Well, hello. Today I'd like to talk to you about Becky Chambers' 2014 book, The Long, Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. Sorry, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. Um, so I picked this book up totally based on the cover. I was in, uh, what is it, Borders Books or Books a Million, whatever it is done in Rapid City. And I saw it there and I'm just like, huh. I saw it had won a Hugo Award for Best Series and well, that's kind of a indicator of quality. So I just did it as a gamble. So uh, I'll tell you something. Sometimes I eat junk food. Tonight, I was lazy when I cooked supper. I had some frozen tortellini. I had a smoked sausage kielbasa kind of thing. So I put them together and put a little olive oil on them and called that supper. Um, I don't eat sweet stuff because I don't like it, but junk food can be fast, like I did tonight, and filling, even if it doesn't taste great, which it didn't. Put a little spice on it, but yeah, it was not great. But it satisfies the need. Tonight I didn't want to cook. Needed to eat because I skipped lunch, but didn't want to cook. So books can be like that. Um, sometimes you read a book purely for uh, entertainment. Uh, her, t her 2014 book, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, I'm going to call a junk food book. It satisfied a need. Oh, there's a piece of wood inside it. That was awkward. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll try that again. So it satisfied a need, which was entertainment. Um, it's the first book in a series that won a Hugo Award. But, you know, not great literature. So, uh, get that out of the way. So the book actually follows a tunneling ship called the Wayfarer. The ship is in the business of creating wormholes, which are just shortcuts through space. Our main character is Rosemary Harper, who's a young woman from Mars who is employed in the, as the ship's clerk. She has a bit of a family past, so she's eager to disappear into obscurity on the ship. I don't know what that says. Um, we're also introduced to ship's algiest Corbin, Captain Ashby, and engineers Kizzy and Jenks. Oh, I bet I know what I meant. Those are the humans on the crew. Uh, in addition, there are the non-human members of the crew. There's an AI named Lovey who controls the ship. Uh, the very affectionate reptilian Sissix. Uh, virus and alien hybrid Oban and non-human doctor and chef who goes by Dr. Chef. They're, uh, they're uh, a likable crew. Even the antisocial Corbin becomes uh, sympathetic by the end of the book. So they're fun to hang out with. And the long way in the title is very true. Uh, we're, we're set up right away that Captain Ashby has a big job. We don't know what it is. It's just kind of in the works. So it's a long way to actually learn what the big job is. So what we end up doing in this book is we bounce around a diverse galaxy as we meet many more characters. Uh, th this crew has friends everywhere and sex with alien species, which if you've ever read uh, Larry Niven, he called Rishathra in, in some of his books. And yeah, it's very definitely a thing in this book. Uh, some people have trouble accepting pronouns in our present day. Uh, this far future universe goes a lot further. We have aliens with different sexes and gender constructs. Um, some of them will change gender and sex multiple times during their lifetime. Some of them, you know, our binary system just doesn't apply. You know, so people have to accept this and be careful with pronouns. And humans in this universe aren't at the top of the ladder. Uh, they can't live on Earth anymore, as an example. So, uh... The aliens of the universe really took humans in. Um, so is there a small angry planet uh, by the end? And yes, and yeah, there were certainly hints about it dropped along the way. But ultimately, who cares? Um, there, there's no real foreshadowing. The small angry planet has a, a unique culture, but we only get to know them at the very end. Uh, it's frankly not much of a payoff. But I also don't think it's really the point of the book. Um, this is a character's book. When you talk about the mice quotient, milieu, idea, character events, this is more about getting to know the cast. 
and uh, definitely on the soft end of the of science fiction, more space opera than anything. Uh, as far as I could tell, the science of this universe seemed to be consistent, you know, internally consistent uh, and well thought out, but it's really not the focus. It's just the background for these characters. Uh, so I appreciate that the government of this society is corrupted by big business uh, interests, just like many governments here on present day Earth. Um, this isn't a story where I could outline the elements of the plot. It's really an just an assembly of character moments uh, directed toward a vague goal. So any review has to focus on those character moments. So as an example, as humans, we value children. I'm in a profession centered around children. On the Titanic, it was rich people, women, and children first. So uh, Sissix, one of the, the reptilian alien, has a lot of eggs. Has no emotional attachment to them. And her people view adults as more important than children. Uh, adults accomplish things. Children don't. Uh, and this shocks her human cr crewmates. Oban is an alien character who goes by the pronoun they because they are infected by a virus that gives them a very shortened lifespan with a terrible deterioration and death at the end. But they control their own thoughts while infected with this virus. Or is it the virus controlling their thoughts? So uh, do their, what do their views on a cure for the virus while well, infected actually mean? You know, it does raise some interesting questions. Uh, and it begs larger questions. What about a cult member who refuses life-saving medical treatment? Um, so in, in the end, it was kind of an engaging, optimistic book about made families. Now the crew of the Wayfarer is a made family, but not a traditional book. More about just getting to know some characters and having a good time. Uh, nothing very... There's a couple events, a couple tragic events. Somebody dies. You know, you get some moments of scariness. But overall, it's a, just a pretty lighthearted romp through space. And from what I understand, the other books in the series are the same way. I have not read them. Um, I think if I do ever read them, I'll probably get them out of the library. But uh, you know, if you're like I said, junk food has its place. I had not a very good supper tonight, but my belly's full, and uh, you know the crap I ate served its place. I'll make something much better tomorrow night that involves quinoa and lots of vegetables. But tonight, junk. So, anyway, worth reading, um, but but don't look be looking for great literature in it. So anyway, I want to thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.